Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, just to go through the uh, free stuff, um, this was a, a video I did a lot earlier, but it was uh, ended up being a lot longer than I anticipated. I went into much more detail than probably was necessary. So I'm going to try and cut the um, content right down and just skim through um, most of it, just headline the major points. Uh, so it's just shorter and and um, not as much. Uh, although I will put a link in the description if you want to know more. You can go through the full video, which is quite long, uh, and if you, for that sort of thing. Otherwise, uh, please subscribe. There's more fishing videos coming out in relation to different rigs and so forth. Also, testing different fishing equipment in addition to my other hobby, which is for driving. Getting straight into this one. So we're, we're looking at beach structures, so it's all about finding the right place for, for to fish because essentially 90% of the fish end up in only 10% of the ocean. So we've got to find that 10%. So we're looking at the intro waves, sandbars, gutters, cuts, holes, points, all that sort of stuff. So um, I'm not going to go through too much about all of that on the slide there because that's just wasting up time but um, the major point there is that fish are drawn to structures and features so and and they're not all created equal so some attract more some attract less so that's where reefs often have a huge amount of fish it's a structure they go to um, this is why we look for uh, troughs or gutters or whatever you like to refer to them as I, I interchangeably refer to them as, as troughs or gutters so it means the same thing same with cunts, cuts, sorry, and entry points or exits. They they mean the same thing. Um, so don't don't if I use those terms, that's what they mean. Uh, so not all of them are the same. Uh, you and any any structure is better than none. Um, so just fishing along any chance of the shore is 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 not always going to produce fish. So it's best to find somewhere where you're going to get some of these structures. So. First up, with waves, uh, this uh, the main reason why we look at waves is they tell us uh, uh, pretty much what's going on underneath the surface. So if you can't get down at low tide to examine a beach where you can see some of the features that will be appearing during high tide, you do it during, um, uh, and you're there during high tide or, or, or somewhere in between, you look at the wave action, and the wave action into us, uh, shows us what's underlying on the beach floor, um, so if you see waves breaking further offshore, it's due to the fact that as the waves come in, it creates energy, and as the, the, the height between the bottom of the sea floor and the top lessens, it grows the waves. The higher the waves means obviously more energy, but also shorter distance, like there's not as much uh, sea, floor, uh, sea there for it to actually um, create, interact with. Um, and also the important thing is how quickly it drops off. If it drops off slowly and reforms again straight away, means there's nothing, there's no deep trough after it or it's a low trough afterwards. So we're looking at those sorts of things when we talk about sand um, waves. So here's a few quick diagrams on it. So essentially this is what's happening. Um, it interacts with the seafloor, creates a big wave and it crashes down. Um, that's that one. So spilling waves is where you've got a gradual one. You don't get this nice big plunging wave. You get a spilling wave that looks a bit like this, which means you've got a gradual, slow sloping floor. So that's not what you're looking for when you're fishing. Um, and this is the surging waves where you're smashing up against structures. So if you've got fishing off rocks or so forth, you're gonna see surging wave style source. So that's enough of that. Really, um, pretty much, same, same as the previous one, but some other diagrams to show the same sort of idea is that you're looking for this type of stuff with a steeper bottom um, to, for the wave that you're looking for. So you identify the wave, you identify the bottom of the floor. Okay, so with the beach, if you look at a beach like this, for example, this picture simply is a, a picture. So what you'd look for is you go, okay, I can't see waves Forming out here, you can see this is a plunging wave um, where it's obviously 
this is deeper water, it interacts with something out here that's causing um, the sea floor to, to raise up and then it crashes in um, and then they spill over and they sort of sort of stop their energy through this area in here, which means that this area in here is deep enough to stop the wave energy from reforming new waves. Um, and that would mean that would be a, probably a gutter or a trough or somewhere that you'd aim to fish. And anywhere there where there's lack of wave action, so there's a lack of a lot of wave movement through here would mean that that's probably a deeper portion where fish will come in and out. So that would be what you'd call a cut or an entry point. Moving straight along, so sandbars. This is what generally what the waves are interacting with is sandbars. This is a picture of low tide. So at low tide, it's great to check it out. So you can see uh, at high tide, you'll generally see the markers where the sea will come up to. This one at low tide showing you there's a sandbar that's exposed. When it's high tide, this water will come across here and it might run up all the way up to here, which would mean this area in here fills up and would create what we call a gutter. Um, so seeing this at low tide go, you can immediately identify it and you don't have to look for waves. So it helps for you to, to identify that. Um, and the reason why these sandbars are important is that as the waves moves over them during the tide changes and so forth, it exposes um, food for bait, bait fish and then obviously bait fish encourage predatory fish to come in deeper the trough uh, the more excited the uh, predatory fish are going to get to come in here's a couple more examples here we are you can see two clear wave actions just further out from the actual shoreline and then nothing between the break and the actual shore that would mean this is something deep through here um, and then there's nothing happening through here, so that would be your entry point to a, to, a, to something. Okay, it's better if we find these close to the shore within casting distance. That's perfect if you get something like that. Once again, this is not going to happen all the time. Another example over here, so you've got wave action out the back here. So there's sandbar or something that's occurring that's causing these waves to break. But then there's a deeper section in here which causes no waves and them just to continue flowing towards the shore before they break again. And this one, you can see there's a, an open section here where there's no waves, but then there's a deep sort of portion here where nothing's happening until you get right up on shore. So I'd say that's something like a hole in here where you would probably aim to fish either in this sort of area where there's a deeper section or through here. Uh, here's one where it's simply pointed out. So you've got entry and exits where there's no wave action. Uh, wave action a little bit further out, which means it's sitting at sandbars, which you can actually kind of see on the picture. And then you can see here the different coloration before you hit the shore. And it's close enough to be within casting distance. So that's what you're aiming at. Other examples, but I mean, we pretty much touched on that. But as you see, white stuff either side, this is just surging sort of stuff. This would be a hole, a deep area where there's nothing happening. So if there's nothing along the beach line, I'd go for this. Here's another example where waves are breaking here and then here. You might want to fish this one, uh, or if you can, get over the back and then bring it straight through both of them. Uh, these are what you call is when they, the water comes in, uh, it spills up, goes this way and goes back out. This one goes back this way and goes out. So this would actually be a rise and a dip on either side. So that's where the water would drag out. So you'll find that yeah, if you cast out here, your bait would generally try and would be drawn this way as the waves generate force going back. But I don't want to go too much into that because I want to speed this up. So gutters and troughs, so the important thing is, as I mentioned, the gutters encourage predatory fish to come in because it's deep enough for them to, to get into and move around and target the foraging fish or your bait fish. So they would stick close to the sandbar, picking up all the food that comes off. Um, and then obviously the smaller fish then feed on by bigger fish and then your predatory fish feed on those sort of ones. So it's sort of this cycle. Uh, so this is what you're aiming at. We, we'd be targeting and trying to fish in this sort of area to, to get our bigger sort of fish. Um, and what the predatory fish do is, because there's a lot of turbulence in here, some of the bait fish struggle. So they will be zipping around between 
the trough, um, going into close to the sandbar and then coming out even close to the shore near the lip um, and doing circles around um, to, to, to uh, target those bait fish when they can't be seen or they're having trouble with the strong currents. Here's a clear example of a, of a uh, sandbar and trough line where you can see someone standing on a sandbar and someone standing in a trough. So you can clearly see this is the this is what we're talking about and what we're looking at is that um, as the waves come up, they'll break over this and then drop straight into something nice and deep and that's what we're looking for. Here's a prime example. They're breaking way out here. There's nothing happening through this section in here, which would mean that'd be a nice deep trough to, to target as well. Um, another classic example is these are plunging waves. They plunge and then they sort of lose their formation and you'd have a deep section there. But I won't go too much into that. That's enough of that one. So cuts and entries, we sort of covered those slightly. So they're essentially they're just exits and entry points into troughs. So your predatory fish will come in and out of these um, to, uh, during high tide to try and come in to target the, the bait fish that are in this area. You come in here to feed off what comes off the sandbars. Um, so any change of tides are good to try and have a crack at it. Um, and at high tides, you can so have a crack at it. So if you're fishing and you find a cut as well, you can probably target that area. Um, they're not all the same size, they all vary. They can change, sand moves um, all the time. So sometimes cuts are small, sometimes they grow in size, and then sometimes they can disappear. Sand doesn't always stay, there, stay where it is on the beach. It'll often move around um, because of the weather. So... Uh, here's some uh, another example. See so here, very uh, this is a shallow sort of drop, but it's in the drop. Clear example. This is just showing clear example of a sandbar with a cut. So this is where you can see all the water is coming back out through this area. So there's um, somewhat like what you call a rip. So you target your trough area, but you could also probably target around this portion where the fish are coming in and out. Um, or the predatory fish coming in and out, any bait fish will struggle to swim in this sort of area. Um, and they're easily identifiable by the type of uh, wave action that you see over them. So you can see sort of here, there's different wave action happening here. So that would tell you there's something going on underneath. So that's why we look at what's going on. I was very uh, similar, but different. They are not... Um, yeah, they can be by themselves in combination with other things. Generally, we, you see them alongside a point, but it's basically where you see, say, breaking waves either side and then nothing in the middle, um, which would mean it's a deep section between two, two shallower points. Um, so if you can't find like a perfect gutter where it's a deep thing where lots of predatory fish are sitting, a hole is another place that you might want to do. As I mentioned, they gravitate towards these sorts of things. Um, and water seeks the least part of the resistance. So they moved, so water moves to the deeper part of the section of the hole before heading back out, heading back out, sorry. So it helps create a bigger hole in general. So it creates, it gets bigger over time. Um, so if there's no gutter, a hole is, is just, well, it's, it's, it's something and it can help for producing fish. So some more examples of a hole. So this is another one you can see. Waves breaking either side and wave breaking closer in, but nothing here. That means there's a deep section sitting right there. Again, here, waves either side, but a big section here where nothing's really happening. That means there's a deep section in there. So target that, target that. Now. So as you're looking along, you're looking for structures like this to, to aim to get your best chance. Point is, um, I won't go too much into because they can get a little bit more complex, but essentially, um, Sometimes they form on the side of a um, hole and you'll generally have the waves will change depending upon as they come in. It can be a little bit more complex where uh, you'll see them breaking, uh, forming breakers out here. Um, surface generally like these sorts of points because you get nice big breaking wave, um, plunging waves that come through this area. Um, whereas this area it takes until you get to about here before you get nice big 
plunging breakers, which is too close to the shoreline, and over here. So you'll notice there will be a difference in the wave action coming through here, but the reason why this is important is often um, your predatory fish that are in the hole, and if you see a point which is some breaking waves right next to it, try and target close to the edge of that because your, your um, predatory fish will drive your baits closer to this because it creates a lot of um, current and they struggle with it so it's easy for the predatory fish to kind of get out. So summary, um, like I said, not all created equal. So you might not always find um, the perfect structure. Uh, experience, I, I drove up and down Preston White Eels the other day and I struggled to find a a uh, place where I could see a really good section where there's uh, a sandbar and a trough clearly. Um, it was really difficult. It just looked all the same, much like this picture down the bottom where it's just a flat bottom. Um, not an ideal fishing place to set up if you've just got something like this. It's, it decreases your chance of catching some of these. Um, if you can find anything, like even one sandbar, it's better than nothing. Um, and as as the beaches will change all the time because they uh, as the waves move and go and storms come and go, um, it moves sand, moves structures. So sometimes you might need to find a new one every now and again. Um, and not everything will be perfect. So try and look for some of those structure points and aim for those. That gives you the best chance of catching stuff. So hopefully that speeds that up and gets through most of the good points for that.